ビデオ Today, I make good on a promise I made a long time ago. Welcome to Nuku Nuku TV! Enjoy the show! So, a while back, I did a video on the overlooked 90s OVA series All Purpose Cultural Cat Girl Nuku Nuku. Based off a manga by 3x3i's author Yuzo Takata, the plot is focused on a custody battle in the most literal sense of the word between a divorce mad scientist couple, Kiyosaku and Akiko Natsumi, over their son Ryonosuke. Amplifying this is the presence of Ryonosuke's big sister, Atsuko, or she is better known as Nuku Nuku. Originally a stray cat that was killed in the crossfire of a battle between the feuding couple, Nuku Nuku was given a second life by having her cat brain implanted into the body of a humanoid android that was stolen from Akiko's lab. So now Nuku Nuku is a teenage high school student with the body of a robot and the mind of a cat, acting as a bodyguard, a sisterly figure, and a pet to her adopted little brother during the world's most destructive divorce proceedings. Nuku Nuku is exactly the silly, kooky plotline that non anime fans would come to expect in the face of their oriented. Mentalist mindset of wacky Japan. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the OVA Nuku Nuku is a totally solid experience if you like great destruction animation, hot anime girls, or if you choose the English dub, Misato making cat noises. Meow. But something I only just briefly touched upon in my last video on the subject of Nuku Nuku is that the franchise has long been fraught with something of an identity crisis. Going all the way back to when the OVA was running, halfway through this six episode order, production was put on a brief hiatus in order for the anime to go for a round of retooling in response to sluggish sales. If you wonder why halfway through the OVA, the episodes get a lot denser and wackier and the divorce plot sorta of kinda of fades into the background, Don't you wanna destroy her once and for all? I don't care about that anymore. What? Animated Film decided to rework the anime to less focus on the cuteness of Nuku Nuku and her dysfunctional family, and more on the set-piece-centered comedy. We don't know for sure if that turned things around for them sales-wise, but the OVA did turn into enough of a success to have legs into the mid-90s, I guess, to get itself not just one TV anime, but a TV anime and an OVA series that's about the same length as the average TV anime. In 1998, Studio Ashi was able to deliver two Nuku Nuku anime in the same year. The first one, known as Nuku Nuku TV, was released in the winter season. It was an attempt to build on the goofy premise of Nuku Nuku by having it be infinitely goofier, filling it with half-baked Sentai parodies, one-note gag characters, and even more one-note gag characters. That's right, that's right, what Ms. Chaco says is right! The final cut mostly just wound up being a C-minus Urusei Yatsura ripoff at best. Not even the presence of cute mouse girl aliens could save it. The second one, an OVA released in the fall season, was its complete opposite. Instead of getting sillier, it was going to take Nuku Nuku in a far more serious direction. A more action-focused direction. A more romantic direction. That creative decision most likely killed the Nuku Nuku franchise. I was born into this world for one purpose. To destroy anything that threatens life. Ryonosuke Natsumi is your average 14 year old student walking home from school one day when he suddenly catches a glance of a beautiful young college aged woman saving a cat from an oncoming car. Captivated by this encounter with a perfect stranger, Ryonosuke goes home, only to find a surprise waiting for him. Hey, I'm home! Welcome back! <gasps> His mother and father, Akiko and Kyusaku, had taken in the same woman he encountered into their home. Her name is Atsuko Higuchi, and the reason why she has been taken in is because her parents were recently killed in a car accident, and she has lost most of her memories as a result. But she can remember that she does prefer to go by a certain nickname. My name is Atsuko Higuchi, but you can call me Nuku Nuku if you like. Uh, but that's just a cover story. Nuku Nuku is actually a prototype androbot which has escaped from the research facilities of the powerful Mishima Corporation. Akiko, who is employed at the corporation, is transferred over to a new department to track down and capture the stolen prototype, unaware that it's sleeping over at her own house. 
But the Machima Corporation has their work cut out for them because Nuku Nuku isn't just any androbots. Whenever she senses a living thing in danger, her programming takes over and she turns into a far more tactical fighter to fend off any threats. While this is going on, Ryonosuke is head over heels in love with Nuku Nuku and is hoping that he can at least one day confess his true feelings to her, or at the very least go on a date with her as more than just friends. He is also completely unaware of Nuku Nuku's alter ego and sees the two of them as completely separate people, and he might just have a crush on her as well. Wait! She's gone. The concept of all-purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku Dash is one I'm not entirely opposed to in theory. It's an interesting place to take the franchise, dial down the zany comedy of the last two installments, and make a straight-up science fiction story with smatterings of drama and romance throughout. With a few tweaks, a love story between a high school boy and a robot cat girl tasked with protecting the living could work. But woof, is this a dog of a cat girl anime. In the pursuit of making Nuku Nuku Dash the clear opposite of previous franchise outings, it removes any aspect that made them interesting in the first place. You would think that an anime about a cat girl android could not be boring, but Ashi Productions found the way. So put away the mackerel and the mouse toys, cats and kittens. It's time to figure out what Nuku Nuku got wrong when it got serious. Now being that Nuku Nuku Dash was a far more drastic shift in genre than the shift that took place between the OVA and TV show, there had to be a couple of changes required in order to get this concept off the ground. The first and most obvious was aging up Ryonosuke. The whole crux of the original Nuku Nuku was that the title character was a surrogate older sister type to a little kid. That dynamic is obviously not going to work if you're wanting to make a more romantic anime, unless you're into that sort of thing I guess. So Ryunosuke is aged up 5 years into a teenager. He is still in every kid like in the OVA, but now he has way more teenage hormones to deal with. Shall I scrub your back, Mr. Ryunosuke? <gasps> but the anime still kind of wants to keep the older sister dynamic with Nuku Nuku. So they also aged Nuku Nuku up into a 19 year old. This ends up creating the impetus for the drama between her and Ryanosuke because Ryanosuke is worried that Nuku Nuku won't accept a love confession from him because he thinks she just sees him as a kid. Which considering how he's dressed, he is still kind of our dude. Akiko and Kyusaku are still a dysfunctional couple, but more in the TV sense. They still get into heated arguments with one another, and there is a palpable tension between the two of them since Akiko is the primary breadwinner of the family while Kyusaku spends his days tinkering in his lab basements, but there are moments that show us that they still love each other in spite of that tension. And befitting the more grounded nature of Dash, Akiko at work is not a ruthless girl boss or a flat out sentai villain, but more of a browbeaten middle manager, busy cleaning up the messes made by the higher ups and incompetent peons. Speaking of... Hey, hey Kyoko, let's do it again! Woo, just leave me alone! Akiko's secretaries slash henchwomen Arisa and Kyoko are also back. But not as you know them. Out of all the returning characters, they were the ones who went through the most radical change. For one thing, they've switched names. Arisa is Kyoko and vice versa. Not only that, they've switched personalities. In the original, Arisa was the hot-headed aggressive type and Kyoko acted as a sort of foil to rein in her worst impulses. But now, Arisa uh, Kyoko is the destructive one and Kyo Arisa is the more laid-back type. So why did you change their names around in the first- uh, never mind. But despite this being the more serious Nuku Nuku installments, their personalities are more exaggerated for comic relief. So Kyoko is now a militaristic jarhead whose destructive tendencies come from her taking her job way too seriously. I'm a soldier! I'll show them! <laughs> And Arisa isn't so much laid back as she is a four-year-old in a 20-something woman's body. Hey! I just realized I haven't been on a swing set in a park for a very long time, Meow Meow! Do you understand anything of the situation that we're in? 
I just realized, haven't I seen this character dynamic before? What's the matter with you? Have you got a stomachache or something? No, I don't! And those are the only returning characters for this anime. No Yoshimi, no Amy, and definitely none of Nuku Nuku's classmates from the TV show. Goes down the club and Thank God. Visually, there's really not much to write home about because this is an anime that was produced at the height of the lost decade, so money is pretty tight. Cowboy Bebop was very much an exception for the time. Keeping that in mind, there's something that feels very shoddy about Nuku Nuku Dash. Remember, this is technically an OVA, so theoretically Studio Ashi should have a little more bones to throw around. But in many cases, it looks more like the TV show. In fact, it's exactly the TV show. They completely reuse sets from this like the Natsumi family's house and the Mishima Corporation. And some character designs are obviously taken from the TV show and slightly modified. Well, props to Ashi for committing to recycling. But you know, whatever. This could actually be excusable if it means saving for the battle sequences. After all, this anime was made to be a more action-focused product compared to the more comedy-driven TV series. Surely this means those scenes will be worth the price of admission. Oh dear, me and my misplaced optimism. The action scenes we have in this anime are some of the most stiffly choreographed ones I've seen in a while. And I am not pinning that on a low budget. I have seen plenty of anime around this time that were able to do so much with so little. But Nuku Nuku Dash's fight choreography is one that inspires profound ennui. Sure, you'll get the occasional nicely animated explosion and even an impressively boarded shot here and there, but most of all the fights follow the tradition of still frame with speed lines followed by a brief and awkward bit of animation to assure the audience that this is in fact a real fight you're watching and not just a slideshow of someone's portfolio. Thrill at this duel between giant robots. Suddenly they into the air! It's going to kick us! Somewhere, Yo Yoshinari is crying tears of joy. And while we're at it, check this out. The town! The town is on fire! That's an entire city burning down. Hey, yeah, don't piss on my head and call it a litter box, Nuku Nuku. Presentation wise, nothing really excites. Music is the standard MIDI fare, not worth commenting on, and the voice work for both sub and dub do their job. I mean, they should, considering they brought everyone back for a third go round. But, and I can't emphasize this enough, any problem there is with the voice acting in both the Japanese and English audio track are 100% the fault of the script. What does this anime in is its complete and utter failure to be both a good sci fi action anime and a good romance anime. Before I really get right to it, I need to mention that Nuku Nuku Dash had a combined five writers to work on the series. Having multiple screenwriters on an anime series isn't too out of the ordinary. Bubblegum Crisis, for instance, had seven writers. But I bring this up because it's the best explanation for why the whole of the anime feels so disjointed. The format most of the series follows is your general Monster of the Week setup, a good avenue for anime of this genre to take as it allows for a good fight each episode to keep interest as the overarching plot unfolds. A good example of this is Neon Genesis Evangelion since more than half of the anime is Monster of the Week shenanigans. A bad example of this concept would be Nuku Nuku Dash because it fails at being a Monster of the Week show and implementing an overarching narrative. The Monster of the Week stuff never works because Nuku Nuku's fights are either over too quickly or don't even happen in the first place because she's more focused on saving people. The anime really tricks you into thinking that there are going to be some awesome fights ahead with the first episode, having Nuku Nuku fight a state-of-the-art attack helicopter, and then having her fight her literal clone in the second episode, which is, I will admit, the best fight scene in the anime and the one with the best ending. If you're the ultimate Andrew bot, and what was I made for? I'm inferior? Why? Tell me, tell me what was I made for? <laughs> Unfortunately, it seems like Dash really blew its wad by having its best scene happen in the second episode. It never reaches those heights again, not even in the eighth episode which should have been a knockout of the park considering it reads like a long lost Pat Labor script. On top of this lackluster format, the anime fails to build a world around it. Aside from the returning cast, there's little in the way of reoccurring characters. Most characters are only there to serve the episodic nature of the plot and then cease existing once the episode ends. 
the only exception being Ryunosuke's neighbor who's a snarky kindergartner and acts like his hitch in trying to win Nuku Nuku over. They say love is never bound by age, the gap does present a challenge. So listen, don't get trapped by youthful inexperience. Not exactly helping your not a kid case, Rue. And once again, even though this is supposed to be the serious Nuku Nuku story, the writers just can't help but fall back into comedy mode. You know what this serious sci-fi action show needs? A professor who dresses up like a priest and creates a flower girl android who can only speak in flower metaphors. The meaning of lotus flower is love which has gone far away. And yet, it still sees itself as a far more dramatic anime, so there can be scenes where a silly comedic set piece can precede some prime maudlin melodrama. <gasps> Oh, not me! Uh. Please, I can't fly! Ah! You poor, poor kittens. You must smell it. You must be smelling the scent of Mama. But she, she's gone and not coming back. If I could point out the core reason why Nuku Nuku Dash just fails at creating a captivating narrative throughline, it's because it is so focused on the romance of the anime. The romance that stinks! There is nothing worse than a romance where none of the two parties have any chemistry together, and when that happens in anime, it feels ten times worse somehow. Most romance anime is about building up to a love confession rather than the romantic relationship itself, but even then, you still get a good grasp of how that relationship is going to go in the process. And from what this anime has shown me, any potential relationship between Ryunosuke and Nuku Nuku is a disaster waiting to happen. The whole setup to the romance of Ryunosuke's parents arranging a hot girl to stay over at his house under mysterious circumstances is so cliché that even parodies of it have become cliché. But that complaint doesn't even scratch this anime's love problems. Going back to those character changes I talked about at the first half of this video, not only did the anime change the two characters' ages in order to make the romance angle more palatable, but also their overall personalities. Sure, Ryunosuke may just be an every kid, but how he sees Nuku Nuku ends up revealing a lot about who he is as a person. In spite of not yet engaging into a relationship with Miss Nuku Nuku, Ryunosuke is totally acting like they are already boyfriend and girlfriend. And boy is he ever the jealous type. The moment Nuku Nuku even looks at another man, he becomes the cast's own attack dog and just lashes out at any man who comes near her. Ah! Don't worry Nuku Nuku, I'll protect you from him! I mean, if I even look at anyone else, I'll kill me. And whenever Nuku Nuku does something resembling a social life outside of Ryunosuke's orbit, he immediately assumes the worst and goes to stalk her. You can chalk this behavior up to him being a hormonal teenager, but this is clearly not healthy behavior, and Nuku Nuku should really sit him down and have a talk the moment he gets caught pulling this shit. Frankly, Ryunosuke, our protagonist, is not a good person in this anime. It's one thing to get into this whole sitcom situation where you lie to your friends that the amnesiac girl staying over at your house is your girlfriend, but manipulating that same girl so she will call you pet names to make said friends jealous is some red flag bullshit. Now, what do you say when you drop the G from Darjeeling? Darling? <laughs> oh, no way. This can't be real! I can't believe such a pretty woman is Marinosuke's girlfriend! But I doubt Nuku Nuku even cares because, in this anime, Nuku Nuku is barely a character. In many ways, she is a walking, talking plot device, only there for Ryunosuke to pine over, beat up the monsters, and be the key to the climax in the final episode. What's more galling is that the little personality she does have is all about her being this perfect angel who's kind and beautiful and can cook good food for the menfolk like a good Japanese housewife. It probably shouldn't hurt me so much, but this is Nuku Nuku we're talking about here. What? Hell, even though she does have a brain of a cat in this anime, by the way, that's supposed to be the big twist of this anime, so spoiler warning, she doesn't show that much cat-like traits, aside from occasionally walking on fences and having an entire episode where she becomes obsessed with being a mother cat to a lost group of newborn kittens. I know I'm not their mommy, but I will do my very best. I will give them my unconditional love. <laughs> 
This devotion to uninspired action and passionless romance means that when episode 8 rolls around and they haven't introduced the main bad guy yet, they are left scrambling. So the main baddie of Nuku Nuku Dash is... this guy. Claiming to be the son of founder of the Mishima Corporation, he goes by the name Mishima Jr. Sounds like somebody forgot to replace the placeholder name. So after an incredibly pointless episode about a giant robot duel between Mishima and a rival German corporation, should know that the Germans are also set up as villains since they deliberately put Japanese citizens' lives at risk to win a contest, but nothing comes of that, so moving on, we finally get to the final act of the anime. We find out that Junior is the main bad guy behind the shadowy boardroom that's been ordering Akiko around all series to find Nuku Nuku. And in the next episode, he reveals why. He wants Nuku Nuku to tell him the secret of a golden bell that he has in his possession, and that it might have something to do with her creation as an android for Mishima. You'll find out soon enough. All you need to know now is that we are two of a kind. <gasps> yes, both of us are man-made. We are man-made? And during this meeting, Ryonosuke is stalking Nuku Nuku again, and it seems like he witnesses Nuku Nuku transform to defend him from an oncoming missile. And when he meets back up with her, he seems to be pulling a surprisingly mature Your Secret Safe With Me Superman dealie. But I really didn't do anything at all. Oh, come on. You don't need to tell me such an obvious white lie. You went out on a date in a car with a man at night. That's all I need to know. But then in the last episode, Nuku Nuku reveals her combat form to him and he's acting like it's the first time he saw it. Uh-oh, somebody wasn't paying attention. So in the penultimate episode, Nuku Nuku's father slash creator, Dr. Higuchi, shows up, having been hinted through flashbacks throughout the anime, and he basically gives his daughter and the audience the rundown. Nuku Nuku is an android that was based off of Dr. Higuchi's deceased daughter, who, and I gotta give props to this, has the same hair color as Nuku Nuku from the original OVA. But Mishima wanted to destroy Nuku Nuku, and, in order to protect her, Higuchi erased Nuku Nuku's memory and had her flee to the Natsumi house while he went into hiding. While all this is going on, Junior reveals that the entire Mishima board of executives are just clones of the company's founder, and that he is also a clone, the most perfect clone and the clone with his own ambition, to live past his designated expiration date, which he plans on doing by killing all of humanity. The expiration date of my life, so that I may never get beyond his control. But I'm a puppet with feelings and emotions. So you're going to get back at him by destroying this town? The game's not over yet. It's just beginning. Not stupid yet? Don't worry, it gets dumber. So with the kidnapped Akiko in tow, Junior plans on destroying mankind by unleashing Mishima's ultimate weapon. That weapon is another prototype similar to Nuku Nuku, Nuku Nuku's twin sister. And since Nuku Nuku's prime directive is to protect all life, guess what her sister's prime directive is? I was born into this world for one purpose, to destroy all life. Doomsday device? Ah, now the ball's in Farnsworth's court! And the reason why Mishima wanted to destroy Nuku Nuku in the first place? It's because Nuku Nuku was created solely as the failsafe, just in case her sister got activated for some reason. I'm just gonna let all of that sit for a moment. So in a fit of cowardice, Dr. Higuchi tells Nuku Nuku they have to flee to Germany for safe harbor. So that means Nuku Nuku has to say goodbye to Ryonosuke which I'm sure he's gonna take with a lot of grace and maturity of someone his age. Without any notice or warning, you come to live with my family. Now you're leaving in the same way. I'm a fool for thinking something would ever happen. It would have been better if Nuku Nuku had never come here. <gasps> Jesus, kid, even the kindergartner has more emotional intelligence than you. Is it too late to change protagonist now? And before I forget, it actually is super funny listening to all these actors act their hearts out while having to say the name Nuku Nuku several times. I am so tired. My heart was deeply wounded a long time ago, and the only one who can ever heal it is Nuku Nuku. I will never give her up! But of course, fleeing the country is a no-go for our android catgirl, and she goes back to save the day. Just in time, as Junior has released Nuku Nuku's sister, who doesn't get a name by the way, and, in a hit of classic ham-fisted irony, ends up ushering his own demise. Wait, am I dying? 
Why? Is it my time to die? You know what that's like, don't you? It really sucks. Meanwhile, Ryanosuke, realizing that he was addicted to Nugu Nugu in their last meeting, you think, decides to go to the collapsing Mishima Corporation building where Nugu Nugu is having her final confrontation and apologizes. This is where he learns of her alter ego, which, once again, he should really know by now, and finally, finally confesses his love to her. We don't hear it, but it seems like it works. But this is a star-crossed romance, so Nuku Nuku says her goodbyes and goes off to defeat her sister once and for all. After all, her sister is causing so much destruction. Why she just downed two military helicopters? If Nuku Nuku doesn't stop her now, she might just take out a tank in a few minutes. Alright, skipping to the end here. Dramatic death scene, time skip ahead a few years, Ryanosuke is an adult now, and his neighbor's cat just had kittens, and yeah, just show us that Nuku Nuku's still alive. We all know how this goes. In the face of getting completely obliterated, Nuku Nuku's still- th there we go, there's your final shot. Man, what a way for a franchise to go out on. Nuku Nuku Dash is an idea that should have required multiple passes to get right. Instead, the result is something that feels like a lesser first draft of an anime. On top of having a budget comparable to that of a cheap TV show, its story is drowning in cliché after cliché, all of which were done so much better elsewhere. It's bad action on top of even worse romance, dressed in comedic sensibilities so formulaic that you would have thought Ken Akamatsu wrote them. Nuku Nuku Dash is not an anime that deserves your eyes. You're better off looking at what other anime the franchise has for you. Like the original OVA. That's it. Nuku Nuku Dash, more like Nuku Nuku Trash.